The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Shop, you know, mm. next to the knobby knit. Yeah. And she says they advise their nightmare customers to put a heating pad under the kidney. Oh. And a bit of milk toast, just a little beef broth and some warm wine. And, and pine oil. In the wine? No, in the broth. I mean the brass. A bath. Oh! Sam, look at you. Black eyes and scratches. Your lips cut. You didn't go home at all. I did so. When you promised me you were going straight home for that much-needed rest. And all the time you knew you were going straight to some sordid bar and get into a brawl. I even bought these things from the sleep shop. Next door to the knobby net. To uh, Detective Lieutenant Dundee, homicide detail, San Francisco police. Medical authorities agree that lost sleep can never be made up. From Samuel Spade, license number... Uh, 17596. Fatigue is cumulative. Subject, the insomnia caper. Dear Dundee. Honest, Lieutenant... This is how I got into that mess last night, honest. I'd been feeling a little rocky for two or three days. There was nothing much wrong with me, but as my secretary, the ineffable Miss Corrine, said... Sam, what you need is a good night, please. Which, Lieutenant, is how I happened to be at home, in bed, at 10.30 in the p.m., wearing a sleep shade, earplugs, and quiet pajamas. At 10.45, my right arm went to sleep. I turned over. That's when one of the earplugs fell out. I tore off the sleep shade, dug the plug out of my other ear, stuck my head under the pillow, and was just beginning to drowse off, but... I sat up and lit a cigarette. The city plunged again into the silences of the night. The fog was creeping in on little cat's feet. Then all was peace and quiet again in Post Street. Nothing but the sound of foghorns way out in the bay and the rhythmic throb of the cable car mechanism under the California Street incline. This time, I almost made it, and then... I went over to the window and peered out. The room was on a level with mine in a building just across the alley. I had had occasion to scrutinize said room and its occupant on happier occasions. She was young, red-haired, and also had a nice profile, which I had observed in silhouette against the window blind when she did her nightly setting up exercises. I now observed that she had a boyfriend, and he seemed to be angry. Not wishing to pry into her affairs, I closed my window. Drew the blind, went back to bed. It was stuffy with the window down, but quieter. I actually fell asleep. I dreamed I was home in bed and somebody was knocking on my door. How true. Please, (sighs) open the door, let me in. Who is it? Uh, Evie? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, Oh! (sighs) What? Please, don't be angry. May I come in for a minute? You're in. Oh, thank you. I know this seems peculiar, a perfect stranger. I saw you in the window. That makes us even. I have the apartment across the alley. Yeah, I know. And you saw him. You saw him strike me. No. Well, you must have heard. I heard a lot of stuff breaking. Well, my ship models, he threw them all over the room, broke them to bits. They weren't especially valuable, and besides, they were presents from him. So... Ah, now I get it. Now, you came here to tell me all about your collection of ship models. I think that that's real neighborly of you, Miss... Uh... Dubar. Doreen Dubar. Yeah, yeah, well, it was nice meeting you. Drop in again sometime, and I'll show you my collection oh, of trout flies. Please, don't send me away. I'm deathly afraid of him. His name's Dan McCrae. He's a merchant seaman. His boat just got in today, and... Yeah, but why me? Well, I've seen you in the window so many times, I somehow felt I knew you. That's foolish, I suppose. I don't even know your name. Look, sweetheart, if you think you're going to rope me in as a witness to that lover's quarrel... Oh, please, no. It's more than that. Believe me. I can't tell you everything, but... Why tell me anything? Okay, I'm sorry. 
pardon me for living. I know it's wrong of me. You want to say a lot. I don't want to be hard-hearted about it, but if you're really afraid of the guy, you ought to go to the cops. But you don't understand it. Sorry. Sorry, are you in there? Dan. Yeah, Dan Badger, no doubt, from the game of the same Open thing. the window. Open the door. Oh. Look, chum, before you say anything, let me put you straight. You picked the wrong sucker. Uh, so you're the guy, huh? The old lady said you was good-looking in a cheap sort of way. Well, I think I'll fix that part of it right now. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, so you're going to make it easy for me, huh? Okay, okay. Uh, okay. No. Ooh. 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 Dan, what have you done to him? He'll be all right. Loosen this pie. I'll go get some water. All right. Is he coming around? Oh, where'd she go? Hey, uh, hey, uh, Dan, uh, wake up. Uh, Come on. Swallow it. Uh, what'd you hit me with? Where, where's Doreen? She dissolved. Come on, get up. Okay. Okay, Shepard. This is your round. Who? Not that it matters, Danny boy, but who? You're Frank Shepard, ain't you? You stoop. Can't you read? The name's on the door. Spade. Here's my card. Huh? A detective. What was she doing here? Her story was that she was running away from you. Now beat it, will you? It can't be too fast for me. I'm sorry, Spade. I've been at sea too long, I guess. The old lady over there told me Doreen was seeing the sky every night. Channel fever or something. I blew my top. Yeah. No hard feelings, Spade? Ah, forget it. But when you do catch up with that guy, Shepard, watch your left. You telegraph it. Homicide. Shepard's power. Uh, reach. Up to shape. Uh, the halls of mine. Don't answer that, baby. Let it ring. Huh? Spade, this is Dan McRae. Who? The guy you, you beat up on. Uh, look, look, I just got to sleep. Now, call back tomorrow. Uh, better yet, don't call. Listen, you got to listen to me. I found Shepard. Not much of a fighter. I mocked him up a little anyhow just to scare him. Go on back to the bar. I have one for me. Listen, I'm okay now. I sobered up like a shot. I only came back here to phone. Makes sense, will you? When I got back to the ship, he was there in my cabin. What? He's dead. Who? Shepard? Yeah, he's dead. Hit him too hard? I don't think so, but I've got to know. You're a detective. Now, look, I haven't got much money, but... Then start earning some. This is going to cost you. Hello, Dan. Well, you got here quick. I'm a real fast sleepwalker. This the ship? Yeah, yeah. Come on, I'll take you aboard. Give me the rundown. Shepard took your girl while you were away at sea. You slapped her around a little, broke her toy boats, and generally behaved like a bad boy. We'll skip that little exhibition match in my apartment. Then what? Come on, up this ladder. About those ship models. One was missing. She acted funny about it, and guess where it was? In Shepard's hotel room. Yeah? The Boston Hotel up on Broadway. Crumb dump. I shook the address out of that old lady. Never mind that now. So you went there, went up to his room, worked him over. But he was alive when I left there. That's clear. Then I had drinks in a lot of different places. I think I was in some other fight. Yeah, you look it. I don't know who with just faces, a lot of blurs. I don't even know where all I went. Then I don't remember anything till I'm in an all-night beanery down here on the Embarcadero and a cab driver's holding me up on the stool pouring coffee into me. Then I came aboard. Yeah? Come on, come on in my cabin. I'll show you. There were a few bruises and ring marks on the face, but they'd been cleaned up and smeared with methylate. I know you're not supposed to touch anything until homicide gets there, Lieutenant, but this one had ab- obviously already been tampered with, so I didn't think you'd mind if I rolled him over just enough to peek at the back of his head. There was a tiny cut on his scalp near the base of the skull, not more than a quarter of an inch long. It had hardly bled. I twisted the pockets. In his wallet, 
$38 identification card, Frank R. Shepard, Boston Hotel, San Francisco, and a snapshot of Doreen sailing a model Chinese junk in a pond someplace. In his cigar case, cigars. Around his middle, a tooled leather belt with hammered silver buckles. It was a popular type Hickok belt, but something about the buckle didn't quite figure. The prong of the silver buckle wasn't silver. It was tempered steel. And instead of being pointed, the end was flattened out and ground to a sharp cutting edge. There were two notches on either side of it. It didn't look like they'd been put there for decoration. I took the belt off, rolled it up, and put it in my coat pocket. Well, what do you make of it? You touch it? No. Why? A man falls forward, not back. The cops will say he was killed someplace else and brought here. Then I'm in the clear. Yeah, unless they form a theory that you brought the body down here to dispose of it. Then why didn't I? Maybe you lost your nerve. Maybe you sobered up. How? What killed him? I don't know. Maybe internal injuries, maybe a head injury, or both from that beating you gave him. Maybe he just dropped dead. Heart attack. That's for the police medical examiner to find out. You mean you're going to call the police? I have to. But I called you to... I, I thought you could clear me before... Now, wait a minute. You told me yourself you drew a blank. You don't know where you were or what you were doing. What are you going to do? Call the police. Now, wait. Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose you have to. I do. You first. Yeah. I must say you're taking it pretty well. But... Uh. I uh, had a small dream. Abstractions, you know, uh, cubes and circles. Uh, nothing worth describing. But after I'd given homicide the rumble and crawled home to my own trundle, I did better. I dreamed I was Wild Bill Hickok, the belt tycoon. I was working on a promotion scheme for a new combination belt buckle, toothpick, and murder weapon. Sam Spade, sleepyhead. <laughs> The United States Armed Forces Radio Service is presenting the weekly adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Nuts. Sam? You need garage, Harry speaking. Yeah. Sunday, Sam. Okay, Lieutenant, you got me. What time is it? It's, uh, wait a minute, Jack. Ten after three. Any sign of dangerous Dan McCrae, that rat, my client? Uh, not a whiff. Hey, about that girl, Sam. Dubar, Doreen L., Balboa, apartment, Sutter Street. Can yeah. you give me that description again? Go over and take a look at her. I'm in her apartment now. She says she never heard of you, and she doesn't know anybody named Dan McCrae. And she says she only went out once tonight to a drugstore to get some batteries for her hearing aid and some elastic stockings. All right, Dundee, if you want to swallow a pack of lies, all Wait, right. check the drugstore and she's wearing them now. I'd bring her over there, Sam, but she's a little feeble. <sighs> okay, Dundee, I'll be right over. Hello, Dundee. Come in, Sam. I want you to make sure, Sam, this is the apartment. Yeah. That's my window just opposite. You can see the bed that I just got out of to come over here in response to your untimely call. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Will you come in here, Miss Dubar? Certainly, Lieutenant. I'm very anxious to make that man's acquaintance. <laughs> He was about 65 years old with a pleasant motherly face, gold-rimmed bifocals, hearing aid, and snow-white hair. Over his shoulder, I could see into the kitchen. Sitting at a table facing away from me was an old man. In front of him on the bench were three ship models in various stages of disrepair. Broken masts, rudders, and with a mallet and a tiny chisel, he was shaping a piece of wood. I guessed that it was a broken spar from one of the hulls. Well, Sam... Still say this is the same apartment? Yeah. Same apartment, different people. But you must be mistaken, young man. My brother and I have lived in this same apartment for nearly 20 years. She's lying, Dundee. Have you checked the janitor, the building manager, anybody? The janitor says he's been living here since he took the job in 41. We're trying to locate the building manager now. 
According to your story, Sam, the girl and McCray had a big row in here. Busted up a lot of furniture stuff. I don't see any sign of it. They could have cleaned it up. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, Sam. Okay, I dreamed the whole thing. But those ship models, I didn't dream them. McCray mentioned them. The girl mentioned them. Busted ship models. There they are on the table in the kitchen. Hey, hey good. Now, what seems to be the trouble now, Dory? You surprised this young man so excited about my model. I declare, Sven, I can't make head or tail of it. Something about a girl with the same name as mine and a young man, I forget his name, oh. who seems to have killed somebody named Shepard, I believe it was. Oh, you're so worried about the ship model, young man. Uh, Dory, could it be the girl who brought these over to me to repair? Uh, what was her name? It's just on the tip of my tongue. Who did she say sent her, Sven? Wasn't that Shepard? There, no. I With all know. due respect to your age, nuts. I'm getting out of here, Dundee, while I can still remember my own name. I gotta get some sleep. Hey, wake up. <laughs> oh, oh, Sam. Get out of my bed. I'm sorry. I was beat. I didn't know where else to go. You can go to jail. Their beds don't have inner springs, but it's a free flight. Listen, I had to make that break. It would have been a murder rap for sure. You mean your memory came back? I had a funny feeling I'd seen that guy Shepard somewhere before. And just before I slugged you while we were standing there in the companionway, it came back to me. That guy Shepard, he came aboard ship yesterday when we docked. He flashed a badge on the gangway watch and asked to see the ship's carpenter. The one that made those ship models for you? Yeah, yeah. But don't you see? Manslaughter is one thing, cop killing is another. This ship's carpenter, what's he look like? Oh, thin, around 65. Lame. Talks like a Swede. City morgue. Uh, Maxie, Sam Spade. That uh, uh, stiff tagged Shepard? Uh, Shepard, yes, Sam. Just got him back. I think it's all there. Those autopsy boys. Careless. What killed him, Maxie? Puncture wound. Base of the skull. Hmm. Small, sharp instrument. Uh, anything new on his ID? Well, Shepard seems to be a phony handle, Sam. But it'll have to do till the refill comes along. Sergeant Polhouse let it drop that the boys at his hotel thought he was a detective. Uh-huh. Funny thing about Sheppy boy, Sam. No belt, no suspenders, very loose trousers. How do you keep him up? By the, by the time I got to him, it didn't matter. Hey, I figured he wore a belt, and somebody swiped it off him. That's an interesting theory, Maxie. I'll see what I can do with it. I tucked Danny boy back into my bed, locked him in, and gumshoot around the block to the Balboa apartment. Just to be mean, I woke up the janitor and checked his statement on the old couple in Doreen's apartment. He worked three buildings, was sure of the old woman, but backed down a little on the man, which is what I expected. Was sure of the floor, but not of the apartment number, didn't know any tenants by name, which goes to show, Lieutenant, what police statements are sometimes worth. I thanked him, stole his passkey, and went upstairs. I didn't expect to find anybody home in Doreen's apartment. I was half right. Sven, the old carpenter, was sitting in a chair, staring straight ahead of him. He looked as though he were in a daze. I walked over to him. Even close up, he didn't look dead. But he was. Body still warm, no visible wounds. But he was wearing a tool leather belt with a hammered silver buckle. The prong of the buckle was tempered steel and had the same peculiar shape as the one in my pocket, the one I had taken off a shepherd's body. The ship models were gone. What was left of them I found in the fireplace. And in the charred remnants of what had once been the hull of a toy Chinese junk, I found something that hadn't burned. It was a small metal cylinder with two pins projecting from it on either side about the middle of it. It looked like a miniature lock mechanism, which it was exactly. The key, you guessed it, was the prong of that belt buckle. The cylinder was empty except for a few white grains that looked like sugar. I tasted them. It was not sugar. But in the dope traffic, they sometimes call it that. About then, I heard footsteps outside in the hall. I ducked into the closet, leaving the door cracked enough to see out. Stand over there, Doreen. Don't try anything. I won't shoot you unless I'm forced to. No. You didn't shoot Fred Frank Shepard, did you? Don't ever mention that name again. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, Sven, don't just sit there staring. We've just time to catch the boat. Then, answer me. I don't think he can answer you, Mrs. Brownridge. Oh, what are you talking about? Sven! Sven! He's dead. He's dead! Oh, Grandpa, she's got a gun. Hand it over. Hand it over, Grandma. You won't need it anymore. You killed him! 
Yes, I'm a desperate character. Hand it over. Come and get it. It should be easy for you. Such a strong young man, and I'm such a weak old woman. Now, look, you don't have your glasses on, and this 45 is too heavy for an elderly tripe criminal. Now, sit down and keep quiet. Oh, Sam, I thought you'd forgotten all about me. I've been trying to all night. Where were you? They locked me in a closet in her apartment. Next door? They were going to take me with them, get rid of me on the boat. After what they did to Frank, they had to get out fast. Shepard. Who was Shepard, anyway? I can't tell you that. He was a federal narcotics agent, wasn't he? How did you know? You just told me. Now, tell me the rest of it. Well, honestly, I didn't know anything about it till about a month ago. I was dusting the ship models and knocked one off the shelf. It broke and something spilled out of it. Mrs. Bronrig was here when it happened. She rushed for it and ran out of the room with it. She said she'd take it and get it repaired for me. And then this girlfriend of mine came by while I was sweeping the white powder up. She's a nurse. She tasted it, told me it was dope. Well, I didn't want to do anything until I talked to Danny, but she reported it. And that's when Frank Shepard came to see me from the narcotics squad. He told you to play along with them? Yes. They arrested the man Mrs. Brownrigg was selling it to, and Shepard told her he was taking the man's place so he could spy and get evidence, you see. She believed it because of the belt. This the belt? Yes. That that thing on the belt, it's really a little key that fits in a little... Yeah, yeah. Now, that, that fits in a little lock that releases the little mechanism that makes the false bottom fall out of the little boat. When did she find out that Shepard was a narcotics agent? I didn't. I saw them together so much that I began to think they might double-cross me. Then I thought about that sailor, Dan, that roughneck boyfriend of hers. So I went to Dan and told him I thought his girl had taken up with Shepard while he was away at sea. And I had to let Dan think the worst because I was sworn to secrecy. But uh, Dan's so violent and jealous, he said he'd kill Shepard, so I came to you. Yeah. You were a witness that Dan hit me, and I thought we might have him arrested so nobody else would get hurt. But uh, I guess you were too sleepy to care. Uh, what? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I must have dropped off uh, uh, to sleep. <laughs> Period. End of report. But, Sam. Yes, Angel? Didn't you arrest that terrible old Mrs. Earwig? Brownwig, Effie? Wasn't it Brownwig, Sam? Uh, one of her aliases, no doubt. In reply to your previous question, yes. Who killed Mr. Shepard, Sam? And, and, and how? Look, if you'll recall that uh, Sven was shaping a piece of wood with a small chisel and a mallet. The uh, fatal wound, you recall. Oh, and who killed Sven? Sit down. I want to have a serious talk with you. Oh. Now, over here. Stop twisting your handkerchief. Yes, Sam? Effie, sometimes I think you've been a detective secretary too long. Warps the outlook. Sam, are you trying to tell me that my services are no longer required? You see, that's what I mean. You jump to conclusions, as in the instance of the death of a friend. I only asked who killed him, Sam. Exactly. Did it ever occur to you that some people, especially old, feeble people, just die? Yes. Quietly? Sitting in a chair sometimes? Yes. Sometimes in bed in their sleep? That'll never happen to you, Sam. Sick. But it did happen to Sven. Perhaps the excitement of his criminous activities, fear of discovery, his impending flight were too much for his heart. On the other hand, it might have just been old age. Of course. The point is, Effie, it does happen. Yes. Never in detective stories, only in real life. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's all. Good night. Sam, you're not sleepy. Nevertheless, I'm going home to bed. Oh. Well, uh, good night, Sam. Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>